Hi, it's Fiery Grace the Gifted. I'm here with a Divine Feminine reading for the collective. I'm going to bless and shuffle, and we're going to see what message comes forth. Look at that. Let's get going here. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. <laughs> Did you see that? Wow, wow, wow. What is going on with you? What is up with you? <laughs> so we've got some decisions to make. We have some new level of understanding about really buckling in, settling down, focusing our energy I think that a lot of Divine Feminines sense that the new phase is here. I think there are some who recognize that whether or not union is a part of the initial energies of the new season does not take away the, the remaining beauty of the season. I, I think that there's a, a much healthier view of the dynamic present and that's, that's amazing, <laughs> that's amazing. Hold on, what are we now considering? Plans have changed. Okay, so I don't know what's up, but something's different. Oh, I want to know. Oh my goodness, this is wild because this is a collective reading. So normally, when I if I do this for a person, like a client, I always will like get a message back about what this is about. But this is like, what's going on with you guys? Okay. Okay. Hmm. Wow. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh my gosh, hold on. Let's, oh no, what were you? There was a two right here. Can I get it? What is it? No. What did I just, two of cups. And the Queen of Wands is back here. What's going on? You finally have the confidence and the strength to do this alone. But because you're going to do it in a way where you shine, you're drawing your counterpart in anyways. I don't think you know. Man, this is, this is, okay, hold on, hold on. Because what was happening was you were too scared. You felt like the work that you had done, all right, straight up, if the chariot or the 10 of wands, if either of those two cards, or even the numbers 7, 10, 8, or 17, if any of that resonates strongly, get the Divine Feminine exclusive. It's long. I'm not going to lie. It is an 80-minute reading. It's not for everyone because not everyone wants a personal reading that has so much to do with the divine masculine. But if those cards resonate, I would order the exclusive. It's, I think, 10, 10, 10. I think that's how much the F1 is. What I'm seeing here is a divine feminine who's making the choice to be the lighthouse meaning that you're still invested in the idea of union and a future with your counterpart, but you are no longer like sitting around waiting and you're no longer afraid of what could go wrong or what might not pan out if you do decide to live your life and live your best life fully. So something's happening. But again, what you don't realize is you're just going to trigger them in... Uh, uh, I feel like a lot of readers have been trying to get through to you in that way. This is okay. Come on, keep going. Yeah. Wow. Ha ha ha. Wait, and the two of cups was there too. Okay. Sorry. 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 So that's all three decks, two of cups and all three decks. 
Come on. It's the commitment. It's coming through. Okay. Yeah. If this resonates, also order the exclusive. Some of you really, really have been looking forward to the end of this Capricorn Cancer eclipse cycle. It started back in July of 2018 um, or some other things, you know, around there, which began to culminate the energies. Um, some of you welcome it, but some of you also need some understanding of where you're going, of, of the fact that an ending means a beginning, <laughs> okay? It is inevitable positive change and look at what's coming in the new is the commitment. Okay, again. Okay, this is this is insane. Those of you who already ordered the exclusive will know that pretty much was the in, that this is wild. I don't know what's going on here. It's funny because I even said when I recorded it, I'm kind of sad that it's not a collective reading. And now I'm like, dang. All right, all right, all right. That's okay though, because obviously whoever's here needs to get this message and this is pretty big. Stop procrastinating, <laughs> okay? <laughs> you need to take yourself out of the situation, okay? You, this was one and six of cups is seven of cups. You have something invested so deeply in this situation that it's causing everything to slow down, to feel confusing and to feel emotionally overwhelming. Once you remove what will most likely be yourself from the situation, things will be able to become more loving, more kind, more joyful, more exciting, more positive. But until you remove yourself, see, again, look at this. This is not saying that you walk away from your dynamic, your counterpart, your twin, your goals, your whatever it is you're looking forward to, whatever it is you're trying to manifest or call to you, whatever. No, this is saying take yourself emotionally out of it and become the overseer rather than the, the being in the Petri dish, if you will. Take yourself out of the matrix. Oh my, my, my. Do your research, take yourself out of the matrix and you will see where and how love is meant to be utilized. Oh my God. See, you don't know what you're supposed to be nurturing because you still have some decisions in the 3D that you haven't made, but you can't make them because you're still in that mode in the 3D. The advice for you to get out of this shock and this frustration and this stormy weather that you feel like you're in is to take yourself out. You're, too, you're all up in it. You're meant to just be observing this stuff, but you've leaned all the way into the chaos, the destruction, the frustration, the pain. And it is stopping you from just delivering the love to all of those situations. Jeez. Let's just get, oh my, oh my, my, my. This will be a quick message for those of you who like those kind of shorter, short and sweet to the point. two please just one or two that was 
world. Thank you. All right, and that, and that, and that. Let's get this. I guess we can move. Oh, should I take them? All right, this is insane. This is getting insane, you guys. Okay. <laughs> Jeez Louise. All right, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look into the 3D, all right? We're gonna check in and figure out what it is that we do and don't understand, what it is we're doing right, what it is we're doing wrong in the current space. Then we'll look and understand what making these shifts and changes will mean for us in the 5D, like what Sometimes you have to do stuff in the 5D to influence the 3D, and sometimes you have to do things in the 3D to influence the 5D. And right now, a lot of us just went through this wild shift. It was really, I don't know, it was kind of heavy at first, but then suddenly we just, we felt free. <laughs> we felt boundless. When that Sagittarius energy hit, when that new eclipse cycle really came into focus. And when that shifted, it really shined a light on the things that we needed to wrap up in that Cancer Capricorn. But remember, that Cancer Capricorn eclipse cycle was, it was heavy. That, that was what we went through with 2018, 2019, okay? And, and well, 2020, mostly 2019, 2020. But it was heavy. <laughs> I'm not going to front but it was so necessary. It was an overhaul of our inner feminine and our inner masculine, not just ours as feminines, but the masculines too. It was a global overhaul and we needed it. We needed it. We needed new matriarchs and new patriarchs for the new, new, I don't know, whatever you call this, the new energetic energy that we're in and, and that 2020 and beyond will bring. So what is it that in the 3D we now have to work on in order to have this 5D explosion. Three of cups in reverse, the divine feminine choosing to celebrate even when things are not going well. Divine feminine, you have been in your feelings and truly there are some of you who are gonna say, Grace, for the most part, I've been doing good, but then I wanna ask you, when you go bad, how bad does it get? And for those of you who are like, no, Grace, you're right. I've been in my feelings. I've been, okay, now how bad has it really gotten? How much of your life has it really influenced? Now, it doesn't matter what part of the spectrum you're on. There's no better or worse here. The fact of the matter is we are all being asked as a collective to step our game up, okay? Step your game up. It doesn't matter how bad it gets. You are a light worker. You know better. You do. Look, we all have our periods where we're going to need to mourn. We're going to need to, you know, go through things. There are highs and lows in life. We understand that. But as light workers, it's like me as a Christian talking to another Christian. I should be able to say to that person, but you know that none of that really matters because we're saved regardless. In the same sense, light workers, we have this universal truth that says, it doesn't really matter because love always wins. Love always conquers everything. And yet, as the divine feminine, which is the, we are the connection to source. We are the vessel that connects the spirit world and the, and the flesh. We, we should know more than anybody. And most of us do, but sometimes we just forget because we get so stressed, so worried, so in our feelings, so frustrated with our divine counterpart, whatever. Your job is to dance like a Fanta girl. Me no care how bad it gets. It doesn't matter. All I know is that the sun will come out tomorrow, that I can handle this, that I can do this. What happened to your resilience? What happened to your gung-ho, I can do it all attitude? 
what happened to I will dance in the storm. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to I'm going to find my joy. What happened? When did you get so upset and so sad and so angry and whatever? When when? The conversation we're going to have today is about finding our joy again. What are we not considering before we even start? What is the unasked question of all the stuff that we could have to deal with, with our emotions? What are we not considering? Jeez, the three of swords in reverse. It's time to heal your heart. Unbreak my heart. You healing should not be based on other people doing the right thing. You having a nice day, having a good life, helping others, being kind should not be based on what you have received first. I'm sorry, you got to be the divine feminine. You picked the harder life in some aspects. In, in some aspects, your divine counterpart, your, your masculine picked the harder life. But in some, you did. But you chose to be the feminine in the, in the dynamic in spite of the fact that you might be the one that was always having to be the bigger person and always had to be the one to take care of things. And da, 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 da. You chose the, the, um, the nurturer rather than the provider protector energy. And you chose all the, the fault, the flaw, the negative and all the bad that might come along with it because you knew that you could transmute it into something positive. So stop asking for the world to come in and make your heart whole and do it yourself because you knew before you ever got here that there was a benefit to being the divine feminine. That right there, that this message, that's real specific, real pointed, very, very straightforward. All right, so it's about emotions. It's about heartbreak. It's about not being willing to find our joy and know that we are the ones, we are the leaders, we are the, the people who lead the way when the expansion comes and we're the people who help people fight their darkness and, and we do all this. How could we, how dare we forget? How dare we forget how easy it is to turn that inner feminine on and light up the world, including our own. So what are we doing wrong? What are we doing wrong? King of Cups, we are not emotionally balanced. This is the problem. This is why the unasked question that comes up is a sword, but it's a sword that we're used to seeing a heart on, right? We're used to seeing this emotional aspect to that sword. It is the Three of Swords is less about the sword and it's more about the feeling that the conflict causes. It's about the emotions that come from the pain. And the emotions are what we're doing wrong. We're not finding emotional balance. We are being tossed about like a, a ship in a raging sea. We are frustrated with everything that comes our way and we react emotionally. And then when someone calls us out for it, whether it's me or someone in our life, we flip out and we tell them that they're just wrong and crazy and that we're fine. But we're not okay. What we're doing wrong is we are emotionally imbalanced or unbalanced, whatever you want to call it. What are we doing right though? That's good to know. Okay, what we're doing right is we're moving forward. I get the gist of, of, of both of the energies. I get on one side, we're very excited about what's ahead and we're also moving really quickly, right? We're always ready whenever there's an energetic shift, we're ready to jump on that. But see, the reason why it hasn't been such a good feeling as of late is because of this. Because every time something goes remotely wrong on this adventure, on this fast paced energetic energy uh, uh, um, a journey, I mean, we lose it. We lose our momentum because we get in our feelings. We lose our inspiration to move forward and our motivation. So we end up being stuck. I'm going to tell you the truth. I get the sense that we've been in a bit of an immature masculine energy, to be honest. I think that that is what the Sagittarius moon revealed to us, that, that lunar eclipse. I think that the question of do you believe came forward not to test our inner feminine, but to test our inner masculine. 
because our inner feminine can do all the nurturing and all that but if our inner masculine won't take the time to say you know because our inner masculine is where we have the, the logic and and the focus um the control factor and if our inner masculine wasn't strong enough for this new journey we were gonna mess this up bad it will be it's like those kids that are really really loved which is fabulous and fantastic but they are not going to be good citizens of the world in the future because they have no focus whatsoever they have no responsibility they you know and it's like i'm so happy that they're loved i did not experience that a lot when i was young so maybe i would have given that up but the truth is i am able to do what i do because i was also given logic order responsibility I may have received too much of the other side, right? <laughs> too much of the latter, but finding balance and being able to offer our children love and logic is what can really help to prepare them for the future. And I get the sense here that our inner masculine was really not there. And so when that question of do you believe came up, it wasn't asked to our feminine. Our feminine knows we've been manifesting, we've been doing our thing. Our inner feminine is, is, is a beast but our inner masculine was just such a baby. And we were so mad at our, our divine counterpart masculine, not realizing that the whole reason why we probably matched energy so well early on was because our inner masculines were both big old babies. It was just that maybe their inner feminine was also a baby. <laughs> they, they might've had a little bit of growth to go in, in both, but we didn't want to acknowledge and, and admit that there was a reason we felt that, that mirroring and that connection. Just like them, emotionally imbalanced and ready to just move forward gung-ho. Don't be offended, don't be sad, don't be disappointed in yourself. There is a reason for everything. And rather than getting mad or um, judging, just observe and say, okay, well, what does that mean for me now? Obviously there was a reason why things were like that then. What does it mean for me now? Mm. So good job on staying focused on moving ahead. Just make sure that when you do happen to get um, derailed or you know thrown off your horse or whatever, that you don't respond like a spoiled little child or that you don't respond like a child who just ignores anything serious. Again, you've got, again, you see I'm seeing the imbalance, a child who only knows logic and anything that goes against logic makes them freak out and lose it or a child who only knows love and when any kind of logic is introduced, they're kind of like, Ever. <laughs> or they freak out and they're like, get that away from me. No, it's time to be in the, in the middle. It's time to be willing to say, you know, okay, well, I don't like this, but can you help me understand why? It's time to be able to say, okay, you know what? Even though I don't want to do this, I love you, so I will. It's like finding the sweetness, finding the, 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 um, the good things about love and logic, because sometimes there can be a heaviness to both of those. Love has a lot of responsibility and obligation that comes with it. But if you can find the balance and, and see the logic in it, then it doesn't seem as overwhelming. Logic has a lot of tough truth, but if you can apply the love to that, it doesn't feel so bad. So again, this is about bringing yourself. I think this, the fact that I keep talking about the inner child, I feel like this is also about healing within. I think the divine masculine counterparts have opened up a lot of um, old wounds for us. My, my divine counterpart, he reminds me so much of my dad. It's weird. Sometimes in the beginning, it was really in good ways. But the more I got to know him, I would recognize things that were not the best ways. And then now it's kind of neutral where he says and does stuff. And I'm like, whoa, is that, is that okay? Like I have to ask myself, like, am I, is that, am I okay with this? <laughs> so I think it's interesting that divine feminines everywhere might need to take a step back and go, huh, is there any areas of my life where I've actually been triggered and didn't know. See, I know about a lot of the triggers. I know about the awakening and all this different stuff that happens. But did my divine counterpart trigger me in other ways that I have not as, like noticed, especially related to my inner child, especially related to rejection and attachment and those kinds of things that you know, as a psychologist, <laughs> the things that I would want to talk to you about if, if we were in like a, a therapy session, if we were going to start doing some work together, you know, I want to get to know you from that point and understand more about you from there because that is going to help me be able to understand how you got to the place you are now. So Divine Feminines, take some time to ask yourself, has my inner child been triggered in a good way or a bad way? 
has my inner child did i did i run off like like my the inner child who maybe was just loved so much that the moment i came into contact with my divine counterpart i was just all excited and i just went and started living a fairy tale and forgot about real life <laughs> okay or was i the the child who the moment I found my partner, I was super logical because I was raised to be this way. And I was like, okay, well, now that I found you, let's get on our journey. And I didn't realize that I was going a little bit too deep with my, uh-huh. It's time to heal. <sighs> lot, lot, lot to unpack there. I'm going to leave you with that because I think that's something that you're going to need to take some time with on your own to reflect on. So now we see we're doing some things right. We're doing some things wrong, but they're impacting each other and they're causing us to be out of whack a little bit. But as we shift these things and start to do better, as we start to make the choice to heal ourselves, take some of the emotional stress off of our backs, off of our shoulders, um, as we start to look ahead and recognize that there's gonna be bumps along the way, but just enjoy the adventure. As these things start to happen, how is this gonna impact our 3D? So, what are the odds? that a cycle has ended, what are the odds that I'm pretty sure this is almost the exact position of the, um, in the personal, the exclusive that I did, this was exactly where this was. This deck was right here. So I'm kind of just like, whoa, right now. Death. You know why I know that? Because I, I remember pointing like this and saying, <laughs> you know, death does not come to kill. This is not a sign that something is about to die. Someone's about to die. That's not what this says. This says something already died. This is already over. This is already done. What have we not considered? And even in the 5D, where we have our awakening and we have our awareness, what have we not considered? We have not considered that while this has died, this is over, that we have come into our own and the new cycle has begun. And we, because we have not reflected and, and, and really understood the depth of this, what this means, we don't understand what this means not only for us, but also for what this means for us and the world, how we impact our world. That's, that's, that's important. I, to me, that says you are not seeing how fixing this and refocusing for this latter half of the year, for this this explosive energy that's occurring and all that, you're not seeing how your light work is about to really flow in alignment with divine. You're missing it. So these are related to this. So once we shift out of this place of emotional battle, constant, constant conflict within, constant turmoil, constant decision issues. I don't know what to choose. I don't know which way to go. Ah, blah, blah. Once move out of that, once we fix this, what happens? Of course, of course, because our emotions are impacting our intuition because our intuition actually comes from our emotions. Some of you have heard me describe this before. I have tried to explain many times that your emotions are not what you think they are. They are indicators. In a moment where you feel sad, your vibrational field, your, your, uh, your, yourself, your being, your oneness is saying, this causes a low vibrational feeling within me of sadness. Your job is then to take that emotional indicator. It's like when someone turns their blinker on in front of you. Do you just keep going fast? Or do you realize I've got to slow down because they're about to make a turn. They're going to slow their car down and then they're going to slowly turn. And I have to make sure that I'm not going too fast that I hit them. And also that I don't slam on my brakes and go too slow where the person behind me hits me not knowing what the heck's going on. So if you're driving and you see an indicator, you know what to do. It helps your brain prepare for the next moment and allows things to be fluid so we don't stop traffic. In the same way, if you have an emotion, like something that says, I'm sad, then in that moment, what's supposed to happen is in order to make sure that everything continues forward as it's meant to, you're supposed to take that message and say, this makes me sad. How can I fix this so I am not sad anymore? 
Maybe I have to get rid of the thing that makes me sad. Maybe that's not possible. So I have to work on something within me so that I won't be sad. Maybe I have to be sad, but then I have to just maintain awareness that this thing is meant to make me feel the low vibrational sense of sadness. So rather than being upset at that I am sad or getting frustrated with the thing for making me sad, I simply move forward and allow the sadness to flow and move beyond because I recognize I don't have to let it throw me off course. That is how your intuition speaks to you. It says, this does not make me feel good. This makes me feel good. Get more of that. That is how your deepest desires are, are found. Your, this is how your passion explodes inside of you. Something in you says, oh, I got chills at that. That made me feel good. I should do more of that. I want to seek more of that. I want to seek more of those pleasurable things. And God put that in you. Not everybody gets chills from the same thing. Not everybody enjoys the same activities or feelings. Everyone is unique in their own way so that they will pursue the right path. When you're emotionally blocked, you're intuitively blocked, period. But what are you doing good? How is this, how is focusing your mind and recognizing that your wherewithal that you have deep within that says, I'm going to go forward no matter what, that says, I'm going to keep, I'm going to build that momentum until something stops me. And when it stops me, then I'm going to rebuild it and again. I will do whatever it takes to get myself back up to speed. I will not take my foot off the gas pedal unless I have to because something indicated that I must, but then I'm right back to it. How is this going to help us? As long as we know this is not impacting it, now this is impacting this, this is impact. You see, so what is it that we need to know? Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, wow. It's the freaking lovers. I got <laughs> so many things. I can't, I don't know what's, what am I supposed to say? All right. One at a time. First things first. Obviously, if you've been around long enough, you guys know me. Fiery Grace sees it as the checks and balances, just like a bookkeeper might have, or be, uh, have someone that checks and someone makes the deposits, uh, someone else does the books, you know, you do different things to make sure that everything is copacetic all around. Well, in the same way, I believe that there is a connection like that with the divine feminine, divine masculine, and, and divine. Divine feminine is supposed to put eyes on divine. Divine watches the masculine who's meant to be the head or the leader of the relationship dynamic, really the partnership and the mission. And then the masculine watches the feminine because the masculine knows the divine feminine is getting the information constantly from divine. So I think what's been happening here, and I'm going to be real with you, you're probably not going to like this, but without the intuition, you've been in devil energy and or ego energy, meaning you've been looking at the masculine or you've been looking out at the world and the divine masculine has been looking to you like I need guidance, but you're like, well... I need guidance from you. And you're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. And you're like, great. You know, <laughs> it's like, I'm mad. You know, I said in the exclusive, you know, the divine masculines think very highly of us, even no matter what they've said and no matter what they've done and blah, 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 no matter how unwilling they might be to be, you know, committing or whatever the problem is. Truly, they all find us to be on some pedestal or, better than them in some way or because we're spiritual or awakened or religious or whatever it is they see they think of us as better than so if we if they look at us even if it's not true and they think that we're better than then what the heck do you think is going to happen when you say that you can't do something when you say something's too hard when you say something's impossible when you say something's not a good idea they're going to believe you. So watch what you say, do, watch how you act, watch how you respond in front of your divine masculine because their eyes are on you. And again, I'm sorry, divine feminines, that it's always on us, but you chose this. You decided to be the divine feminine. You saw what the masculine had to put up with and you were like, I'll take the feminine position. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so come on. All right.
yeah, let's get the final message here. Oh man, there's so much I want to say, but I also feel like I'm going to be repeating myself. So I'm not going to say it. I feel like that is probably meant for other people. So I'll leave it there. Let's find out here. What are your guides trying to reach through to you about? The inflow of abundance. Look, the Capricorn lunar eclipse that's happening in July, it officially ends the cycle. I actually see that day as being both the death card and the fool card. Because that day, we end a cycle that began in July of 2018, two years. We look at the way, this is actually kind of crazy because it's right here. It's about looking at the way that we interact with the world. It's a, it's a recalibration that's happening. But what I, I remember noting is that it's also about inviting in long awaited abundance, abundance that was meant to be here a long time ago. What was the delay in this abundance? The 10 of cups, not being happy. See, 10 of pentacles is happy with spiritual gifting, like basic bliss and, and, and joy, but then the addition of prosperity through spiritual practices. But if you don't have the basics, you're not gonna get the 10 of pentacles. And a lot of people were trying so hard to make their happiness dependent upon everyone else. And as much as they didn't want to admit that their happiness was based on their divine masculine, every time they watched a tarot video with the hopes of their union being announced in it is proof positive that they weren't telling the truth. They were not being honest with themselves. So if you want to know, you got to get your happiness up and you got to invite, allow the abundance in. The abundance that you've been inviting in for a long time, you also have to let it come. So as you continue to heal within, which will allow you, you see this major, 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 okay? Major energy is gonna explosion. As that happens, your guides are trying to talk to you about how to allow this abundance in. Find your joy, find your happiness. Be happy, stop being so sad, stop being so frustrated, stop being so emotionally unstable. So what's the final note about all of this and how we can best recalibrate? I forgot. Oh, crap. <laughs> this is so weird. I'm going to read the book. It's the end of a phase or situation. It's time to move on. That's the real message. You want to know why you don't believe that your abundance is finally here? Because you still don't think it's time yet. You still, you try to tell us as readers or your friends or your family or your counselors or your coaches or your gurus or you keep trying to tell everybody else why they're wrong. No, you're wrong. It's time to move on, honey. You got to let it go. Okay, seriously. Let's read. Let's find out. And it opens to the emperor, which is one plus three is four. I'm going to read this last part. Believe in your ability, ha, believe. Believe in your ability to be a positive and diplomatic leader, divine feminine, as much as you don't want to be. I know that it's the divine masculine's job really in your dynamic to be that leader, but guess what? Until that happens, you get to practice being the leader, so that way you won't be a laydown when you guys finally get together. But that's another story. Get organized so that you can be more effective. The desire to be a success, stability, making wise choices, security. The respect of others. Mm. All right, but let's read what we're supposed to read. This card signifies that it's time to move on because this project or phase of your life is now complete. There's no benefit in remaining in the situation. Instead, shake off the old and welcome the new. You may experience a sense of relief at this ending or there may be some sadness. Either way, it's time to leave that which you've outgrown. Take your time in adjusting to this change in your life. It's not necessary to rush ahead. Be kind to yourself during this period of transition and seek the support of friends and family. Inevitable positive changes, facing your fears, relationship transitions, boom, there's that, spiritual evolution. Listen to this. 
Archangel Azrael, help heal your heart when change and losses bring about grieving. Call upon this angel to help you move forward fearlessly and let go of the past. Seriously, I'm trying to tell you here, be a Fanta girl. I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can look up, hold on a second. What is a Fanta girl? Think something will come up? They're called the Fantanas. They're spokesmodels. Mm, you are a spokesmodel for the light workers and the collective. They dance. And they're a quartet. I, I get the sense for that of all four queens. Okay, you need to have a little bit of queen of cups in you, right? The calm, the intuitive, compassionate, a little bit of queen of swords, you know, kind of that spicy, quick on your feet, witty, a little bit of queen of wands, very vibrant, a little bit of a cha-cha-cha in there, um, flirty, um, and you need to have a little bit of queen of pentacles, okay? A little, you know, some boss in there, some, some, um, uh, you know, down to earth, but also very uh, focused, 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 focused. Um, you need to have all these different parts and pieces of you that make up your whole as an empress. And you need to cherish each of those pieces of yourself. As you move forward, ask for help, whether it's from, you know, someone like me as a reader, a coach, a therapist, all the different things that I have to offer you, not only as an intuitive, but as a professional I am trained to do a lot of the things that you need. So find someone out there like that. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's a family member. Maybe it's, I don't know, you go to a group or you go to school, whatever it is. Get the help that you need to be who you're meant to be in this season. Let go of the pain. Let go of the sadness. Open yourself up to the good that has come. Seriously, you have been asked to let go of yesterday. And what I'm trying to figure out is why do you have to be begged when you know full well that that's not what you wanted? Yesterday was not the life you wanted to live. The last two years have not been where you wanted to be. It's not to say that it was the worst and blah, blah, blah. It's just simply to say that your best is yet to come. So invite that in. I pray right now that anyone listening to this that can hear the sound of my voice recognizes that they are worthy and able to receive all the good that God has for them in this moment. In this moment, it has just clicked. And whether you know it or not, whether your ego tries to hide it or whether you have worked so hard and that message just came straight through, boom, you got it. At some point when it's supposed to, it's going to click and you're going to be ready. The spiritual transformation has already occurred. You will transform even more in the next season of your life, over the next two years, over the next 10 years, over the next 18 years, over the next 35 years. These are all the cycles that are beginning. Heck, we're in a one month slash six month cycle right now. I mean, there, you just don't, you are so incredibly amazing. You are so powerful and there are so many good things that you are here to do and the time is now there is no more waiting there is no more on pause it's time to get up and go so let's do this do you understand me let's do this i am calling you to do this because it's not just me sometimes it can be a small few of us but there is a reason why this message came through for you so do it get up and do it okay all right, I'm going to get out of here. I love you. Oh, <laughs> hello. Welcome. It's me, Fiery Grace the Gifted. See, every time I forget and then I get all excited, Rico comes over like, what are you doing? Why did you just get excited? I am Fiery Grace. I am an intuitive life strategist here on YouTube. I can assist you in a variety of ways. So any reading that you've ever seen me perform, any um face-to-face -face video where you've gotten to see me kind of chat and talk to you. If there's anything that I have said that has clicked, resonated, changed your life, if we were to have that experience one-on-one, -on -one, how much more profound do you think it would be? So if you're interested in working with me, there's a reason you were led here. And so far, the work that I've done working with people around the globe has been nothing short of incredible, transformative. And if you want to work with me, 
it's really, really simple. You just have to go to my website, thefirygrace.com. Again, there is an exclusive Divine Feminine reading associated with this particular reading. So if you're if this resonated, again, the cards I mentioned earlier, but in addition to that, death. Again, I know a lot of people might not want to resonate with that, but if you've been feeling like a cycle has ended and there's something new and you do believe that you need to figure out how to meet your divine masculine halfway, the exclusive, it's an hour and 20 minutes, but it will be, it will be big. It will help so much, especially if this resonated. I won't say that this was necessarily the king of cups as a card was in the message, but if this particular positioning and what we talked about here resonated, again, that's going to be a good one. So, um, but if not, if you would prefer a personal one-on-one -on -one reading, you can always order a pre-recorded reading on my website, or you can get a live session with me and we can go through some things together. I also do sessions without tarot. I do phone calls. All my phone calls have no divination. Uh, I use my own intuition and my skills as a counselor, a therapist, a personal project manager, a consultant, all of those things to help you out. So I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of divine feminines who see this video and recognize I've been wanting to get a reading from Grace for a long time. Now's the time. But if you're new to my channel and you're like, whoa, how did you know? How did you do that? Every so often I get this sense that I'm going to be busy <laughs> and I have a feeling that it's about to go in that direction now because these few readings that I've been doing for the collective, for Twin Flames and for the feminines in particular have been off the charts. So hit me up. You can always email me, thefirygrace at gmail.com. If you'd like information, you can email me directly and get an auto reply back. So some people will even just email me and say, looking for the auto reply or just send me like a blank email um, and you'll get that, re that reply back. I accept PayPal, Cash App and Venmo and I offer a variety of services. My love letters, divine masculine readings and personal readings are my most popular, but I also offer services, readings, coaching for light workers. Um, I do all kinds of union crisis coaching for people who just are going through it and need to talk to someone right away. Um, and I also offer dynamic services with my divine masculine. So if you'd like to talk to both of us, feel free. And then my divine masculine is Mr. Lightwork. If you'd like to go and follow him, subscribe to him on his channel. Uh, you can find him on my channel or just search Mr. Lightwork. He should come up pretty easily now. And then his website is mrlightwork.com. So if you'd rather not work with me, um, but you do want to talk to someone who can give you the divine masculine perspective, hit him up. I think that's everything that I needed to do on here. I am a good steward of my gifts and I appreciate God for giving me this business. Thank you, Lord, for helping me work from home. Ah, Last thing, I do have a monthly seminar coming up. I am going to have to change the date of it. Um, so I will be updating you guys on that. But it's going to be the third or fourth week of June. So I'll let you know about that. I'll update you soon. Um, the monthly seminar currently is for those who are interested in starting their own YouTube channel or building an online business and working from home. Uh, I've done it myself in less than two years. The only thing that I had <laughs> was God. <laughs> That's all I've had in terms of assistance. Um, and so my goal is to help people who, you know, don't have a lot of understanding of how to do it or are missing some of the most important links. It's to help you guys make that connection and be able to do that on your own in a shorter period of time without the learning curve that I had where it was just me and God. Um, so if you if you want to kind of join on that and get some of the information of the what I've learned over the past couple of years, especially if you're confused about working with YouTube and, and how it works and all of that, join the monthly seminar. It'll be, like I said, the last uh, week or so of June. I think that's everything. I'm out of here for real. I love you. Peace.